Thanks for joining us. I'm Paula Evan with a WBZ News update. Top stories this Monday. A death investigation is underway in Quincy. After a man and woman were found on the red line tracks, a rail operator made the discovery this morning near the Wollaston station. Transit police believe both victims came into contact with the third rail. We're hoping to get an update soon on Patriots quarterback Mac Jones. A source tells ESPN's Adam Schefter that Jones likely has a high ankle sprain. Jones is set to undergo an MRI today and speak later this afternoon. And the Celtics media day is underway right now. Our first chance potentially to hear from the new interim coach and players since the Celtics suspended Ime Udoka last week. Multiple reports say Udoka had an inappropriate relationship with a woman who works for the team. Let's get a check of the forecast now with meteorologist Sarah Robleski. Sarah? We're in the 70s in Boston with some sunshine, but you can see out to the west here we've got this area of low pressure. And some of these showers will pivot right into New England. So today we're looking at temperatures climbing through the upper 60s into the low 70s, a mix of sun and clouds, and can't rule out an isolated shower. I think best bet will be through the interior, especially later in the day out to the west. Any activity will likely begin to die out, and we'll fall back into the 50s tonight. Come tomorrow, back into the 70s, a little bit breezy, but then cooler weather for our Wednesday as well as our Thursday. But overall, we're looking at the majority of conditions to be fairly dry. Now, of course, we're keeping an eye on Hurricane Ian as well. Category one hurricane, the outer rain bands already impacting parts of Cuba. It is moving northwest and it is expected to strengthen as well as slow down. In fact, become a major hurricane as it pushes off of the coast of Cuba by tomorrow morning and then approach the western coast of Florida. Still a lot of questions on the exact intensity as well as where it could make land landfall later on in the week. But there is the potential that we could see, of course, numerous impacts all the way from the panhandle down to areas south of Tampa. So, of course, we're going to be watching the track very closely. As it interacts with land later on in the week, it will begin to weaken, but, of course, it will just expand its wind field as well as bring a lot of moisture with it. So the track is key, likely going to see some changes and updates if you do have friends and family that live in Florida. Hopefully they're starting to get their preparations underway because the greatest impact besides the hurricane force winds will be the coastal and inland flooding. We are talking about a storm surge potentially across parts of the western coast 5 to 10 feet inland flooding 6 to 12 inches of rain so as we'll be watching for that potential landfall late in the week We'll watch as the remnants could potentially come up our way, noticing as we head into the weekend, uh, expanding down across parts of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. But for us, high pressure to the north may also push it to the south. So we'll be watching it closely. I think if we look at our next seven days, well, we'll be pretty quiet with temperatures in the 70s and then 60s to finish off the week. By the weekend, we'll be watching as we could introduce some showers late Sunday into early next week, but it's just too early to call. Paula? Thanks, Sarah. I'm Paula Evan. This has been a WBZ News Update. Have a good day.